Trent, we are back once again. This is game two. The Yashimoto de 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 Detonators versus Mega Oris. What do you think Yashimoto means? Is that a sponsor? I would guess so. Yoshimoto. But I don't know. I'm going to Google it. Yoshimoto? Yoshimoto. It might be a cell phone. Uh, it's a Japanese entertainment conglomerate with headquarters in Osaka. Ten seconds remaining. Good to know. I don't no, I I don't I don't think Five that's the sponsor. Remaining. Apparently it is this the sponsor. company look, it's right there on the flag. Yeah, but that's not the the company's logo. Oh, how unfortunate. This they they've made a lot of stuff though. Apparently it was established Resist in nineteen twelve. This is like that time where we thought that one uh South American player was named after the uh the one actor in Breaking Bad, and then we realized that we went down this rabbit hole and it was literally just his last name. Oh, yes. Heisenberg. Wasn't that a guy named Heisenberg? Isn't that what it was? No, it was something way more obscure than that. His, oh, I see. The actor that plays Gail Bedecker's la real life last name was the same as that guy's handle. So we thought it was like this crazy, like, oh shit, he must be a big fan of that character in that show that this actor did. It's like, actually, him and the actor just have the same last name because the actor's South American. Wow! It's crazy. <laughs> Whoever would have thought. That's beautiful. It was. This, I think that happened to Dota Pit, actually. Trying oh! Oh, it was Constabile. That's it. Constabile. Nailed it. That was it. Why well, you remembered? Look at you. You actually remembered. Radiant team pick. Trent, I'm blushing right now. That's a great memory. Team. Yeah, no problem. Disruptor. Well, uh, so sanking first into then Bounty and Beastmaster for some uh, vision gaming. And then uh, we're going to have a Batrider once again to have that same dual lane from the Mega Oris Snuffleupaguses. Now, I'm really glad they banned Tinker because I was thinking, man, these are those two partners that really like Tinker. Yep. And uh, Mega Oris, they they are well aware. They're going to play around that and uh, take remaining. him out along the Weaver. And I think Weaver banned pretty smart. What if he's an Invoker player, though? Um, then we'll have the same problem. Uh, yeah, but... Although Invoker is worse than Tinker. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I feel like Tinker is harder to deal with just in general. You know, he's just so much more obnoxious in team fights. Invoker, yeah. I think in, in the current meta, most teams are probably thinking to themselves, listen, dog, if you really want to pick Invoker, I mean, we're not going to have a big problem with it because we'll just kill you. We're just going to kill you over and over again. You know, Trent, I, I want to share something with you real quick since we're looking at Okay. Trends. Now, wait, wait, what is this? Oh, it's PL. Hey, what a surprise. He had a really good showing last game, so... Um, all right. You know, Dazzle Axe, I can't tell you. I first picked Dazzle now in my games because people pick Axe immediately thinking that they've counterpicked me, and then I just kill him in the lane over and over and over and over again. Do you know how good the new poison is against Axe? He's level one. I'm level one. Do you know how embarrassing it is to be position three and get killed by a fucking position five Dazzle? <laughs> Over and over and over again. Over and over and over. Well, they, they it happens. They come back to the lane thinking like, oh, guys, I'm going to shit on this Dazzle. I counter him really hard. Wait till I get level six. I'll kill him four or five times before they hit level six, Trent. And then you know what happens? They lose because they don't have an initiator. And you demand. Yesterday, I got more commends from the other team than I did from my team because I told the other Axe how bad he was. And they were like, yeah, he's terrible. Woo, you're awesome, Zayori. Oh, man, Dazzle. That's how much fun I have in my pubs these games. These, these days. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so I digress. Here, Where are we at? Gyrocopter. Uh, well, we got a PL. Then we got the counter pick of the gyrocopter. Some pretty standard stuff. <laughs> okay, that's, that, where, that's we where we are. That's where we're at. <laughs> All right. We haven't moved a lot further. Uh, I think final pick for Yoshimoto.detonator is going to be a mid hero. Uh, that has some burst to actually capitalize on the Beastmaster Roar. It's what they need. But uh, we get to see what Mega Oris pick first. So, what are they missing? Uh, AoE control would be nice. A little bit of follow-up and lockdown. Sadly, I'm not a believer in the Puck Hero anymore. 
Uh, but you? a puck esque hero. Trent, I don't believe that for a second. I know. Ar aren't sad. you that guy that for like six months straight is like, you know, it would be really good right now? A puck because, you know, they could off lane it or mid it. Yeah. Puck. Puck's dead. It's over, dude. I think if we were to, to aggregate and tally up all of your, your draft predictions, Puck is probably your most predicted hero to be picked across the board. Yeah, but I'm usually right. But <laughs> I think you're usually right when it doesn't come to Puck. But I'm right. They're, they're just wrong. Ah. Ah, That's what yeah. it is. That must be what's happening. Uh, no, they could use some burst as well. Like... It's okay, but... Quap, dude. This is another Quap game. There it is! I think the Quap was what Detonator wanted as well, so I think that might be why they wanted to just pick it, because they obviously just played it, so that feels good. Um, it's it's good but, for both drafts, honestly. Yeah. A bursty mobile core that can relatively be um, you know, self-sufficient. What about... No. No. Take it back. I'm not even going to say it. What about... Uh, Man, who's bursting? I think they should just well, death what about profit, TA? sadly. TA. Eh, not against Bat Rider. No. I think it's played into Queen and Bat. What about uh what about Storm? Storm into Queen is not fun. I don't think it really helps what they have. I think you're just kind of stuck with Death Prophet. Yeah, that feels safe. I'm not really sure what else you would pick. I mean, if you're comfortable with Wind Ranger, she's okay, but that depends on mm -hmm. your player. I don't know him too well. Mm. Lena? Is this a Lena game? Lena wouldn't be terrible. She has burst Hey, too. it's the puck. What do you know? You uh, happen to be right this time, pal. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so I think, Not theoretically, I actually think that Puck would be better for the Dire team and Quap better for the Detonator team, which is kind of funny. So I think that what happened was that they're now taking the Puck just because of the matchup, right? Because Puck does beat Queen these days pretty hard. But Puck, uh, Puck has issues, man. Like what? It just doesn't have enough damage. I guess in the mid lane, it's different. No one runs at mid anymore. It's always this off lane puck that runs into trouble. Uh, I've seen Ori run it a few times lately in terms of a mid puck. But uh, at least with mid puck, you get all the levels and the gold you need. So that you can actually get Veil, Blink, and Yules. The off lane puck has to cut one of those items. And they always end up suffering because of it. And of course, you're not going to cut the Blink. So you're either not getting your Veil or you're not getting your Yules at a time in which it's relevant. Uh, and most people go for the Veil, which means that they don't have the Yules, which means they don't have the levels in Phase Shift either because they were off lane and they just keep dying over and over, uh, a.k.a. Okay. Fada. So, um, <laughs> mid-puck, I have a bit more faith in. Okay, no, I, I see what, what you mean. Those are definitely some conundrums for the puck. Um, and being mid, you're going to get more experience. You're going to get a little bit more farm. So you get over that that first kind of road bump pretty hard. Look at that PL's name. Yeah, that's That's offensive and... Also sensual. I will say that uh, these are squishier drafts than most as of late, I would think. Um, I feel like Especially for most Denver. drafts have more strength heroes lately, so this is a better game for Puck because of it. Well, they've got the Beastmaster. Yeah, you're right. Both sides have a lot of Squishmasters. How do you feel about uh, Bounty Hunter right now? Are you you feeling confident about that? I'm the, a pretty big fan, Gage personally. Pick? Really? I think he's difficult to execute. He's not as easy as he used to be. Uh, but a well-played bounty hunter is uh, definitely game-winning. No question about that. More so than, like, most position fours and fives. Right. Sniping couriers, uh, providing good areas for your team to farm. So, like, finding where the opponents are on the map to create safe havens for your Phantom Lancer is always going to be very important. Right. 30 seconds to battle. I would be shocked if you get a courier, though, uh, in the first three Three minutes. Well, I feel like we always say that. We always think like, okay, how many times you need to get fooled by the same thing? They've got a bounty hunter. Of course, he's going to try to snipe the courier, but it still seems to happen pretty regularly. Sure. It's not, I mean, he does need level two for that, uh, like, insta-give, right? You need the Janata. 
Not for uh, walking crew. Not for walking. Okay. okay. <laughs> but we'll see. Quap has the salad queued up, so there will be a little window for this bounty to try to do it. That's the other thing. It's like the way mid is set up. Quap still needs to use, needs to get items. So it's hard to just straight up not use the courier, and even forcing Quap to like walk back to the tier two to rendezvous with the courier is is damage done where your puck is getting some space in lane we'll see a little stun come out disruptor will be just fine uses the kinetic field bounty lingering thinking's just pinging the area though and he's saying like yo he's just he's, he's here dog don't do it like you have to wait till the bounty actually shows somewhere I think the queen should have the south in the courier, and the courier should be moved up to that high ground. Because right now she's gonna see the bounty hunter top. She's gonna send out the south, and that still creates an extra wiggle room. So like she sees bounty up top, does she instantly call it? Nope, still sitting. Bounty's doing a lot of damage up top though. 14, 14. Her All right, now pretty hard. So she saw the bounty. Now the south's on the way. Oh, she's waiting for the circle too. Fair enough. Down bottom, what do we got here? This is the PL Disruptor lane against the Sand King Bat Rider. Oh, Puck's going for the snipe mid? No. No, I'm not going to do it. Thought he was. This bounty's doing a lot of work in the top lane, though. Beastmaster's getting some room to farm, and he's just putting on the harassment. Now he's going back down bottom to try and help his PL though. A big. Same king. He used to one fan more. That rush to the creep wave. Yeah, Yaj not going to be able to get it. But humble. The right clicks. Maybe now they'll finally have the Sand King. A big rops around. And Yaj actually gets credit for that one. Now Aloha. The Thunderstrike. It's going to be pretty close. They'll need one more and they do find it. All the while in the top lane though. Looks like they did lose the Beastmaster. So it is a trade two for one around the map. Obviously, the detonators, though, getting the advantage. Yeah, solo Beastmaster is uh, a problem. And even Gyro gets the courier before three minutes. Wow, that's uh, bad news for the Beastmaster. Just instantly has more regen. And so all of this harass and like him dying doesn't even really pay off. And he might just be dead here. I think so. Another rocket. There will be mana for a rocket barrage once he uses the stick charges. So Owa needs to figure out how to position this. And that's eh, not going to be it. That's not even a needed rocket barrage. Now back to the bottom lane. Aloha dead again. Yaj might still be able to survive this. Sand King does not have a stun. He dives the tower, pays with his life, and the humble bundle will get a double. Four to two detonators dominating this bottom dual lane of the dire. Man, it's just such a bad matchup for Beastmaster. Like this is one of the worst lanes for him is the gyrocopter. And then for it to be the Bane as well, who is the strongest position five laner. This Beastmaster is just set to have a completely awful game. Yeah. And not and a hero jungling. that plays super well from behind. Not a hero that jungles particularly fast or well, especially with this build. Um, you know, this is this is the way to do it. You see maxed out axes pretty regularly, but without Call of the Wild, you don't even have that extra creep to help you kill those neutrals. It's pretty brutal. Um, and, you know, you can pair this on the other side. Same thing, though. I mean, Batrider is getting demolished in lane. He's 9-3 in terms of last hits, but he's already died twice. He's still only level 2. All right, I guess Demolished is strong. They're they're at least able to stand in the lane and get experience, which you can't necessarily say for Beastmaster. But I wouldn't say Batrider's having a, a, an easy time. Oh, Queen of Pain's so unlucky. Like, if that regen room was top, our game would be so much better. But she uh, gets the wrong guess. It'll be bought. Unlucky. Feels like this is how bounty hunter games go. You either dominate early or you just don't get that much done. You know, you're either sniping couriers and crippling that lane or you're just kind of getting outmaneuvered. He does at least have level three, so finding some experience, but now in the bottom, again, this skirmish breaking out. The Bat Rider is in trouble. They might be able to find this kill on the Disruptor first. That would be huge, but no, the Bat actually dies first. Disruptor gets the XP. Bat Rider does get some shutdown gold. 
I think the disruptor will be okay with that. Yeah, but Bounty's back in time for the runes. And, yeah, he has done a great job, as you were saying, at getting level 3. Because uh, he was down bottom when a couple of those kills did happen. So, uh, it's not uncommon for a Bounty Hunter to be, like, level 3 at 10 minutes, honestly. Yeah, just be locked at that ultra-low level, desperately trying to get tracked. Again, down bottom, it's going to help out Yaj a little bit more. Nice kinetic field from Humble, but stunned from the Sand King. He's getting this Bounty Hunter low. Oh, God, he needs to be careful. Aloha. Flying back up to the high ground. Maybe Bounty Hunter can snag this pick. Nope. Instead, goes the other way. And the Sand King gets the kill on Disruptor. I don't even think they saw the Bounty Hunter. I think that was just a Sand King stun while he happened to be on top of Firefly. And that's what got him so low. Yeah. Mid lane now. Dream Coil. Puck hits 6 level first. And Queen of Pain is going to die. You're talking about how uh, one-sided this matchup is. Bane comes in, does make it a one for one, but still Puck just showing off his dominance there as he picks up that solo kill. And look at the denies too. Like 36 and 11 to 22 and 5. Yeah. Puck is just miles ahead. 29, 30 uh, net worth compared to the 1700 of the Queen. Yeah. And a full level ahead on top of that. So down bottom, more back and forth action. It's just non-stop trading right clicks between this PL and Batrider. Yaj is going to be able to wrap around the level 3 bounty. Does have two points in the Shuriken, actually skipping the Janata. Looks like he'll be able to survive against the Batrider and help set up that kill to get another one on the scoreboard. But all the while, missed another one up top as the Beastmaster dies again to this Gyro Bane combo. Now Gyro 6, Bane 5, the Beastmaster only level 4. So the dual lane is out leveling the solo lane. That's uh, always a bad sign. He even pinged the, this ward on the high ground, but he can't even afford to get the sentry for it. That's he... how, like, <laughs> it's an instant return on his investment, but he can't afford to do it. That is painful. Yeah. No, that's... Now you're, you're pulling the Kramer here. You're like, it's a lock, Jerry. It's a lock. Mid lane? Oh, Queen might have seen the bounty. She was paying attention. Uh, well, she's going to be in trouble not. again. The Dream Coil so good in these situations, but Cumin makes the best of it, kills the Bounty Hunter before he goes down, so at least gets some XP, some reliable gold. Still kind of unfortunate, and, um, well, at the end of the day, Puck is the big breadwinner. But Certainly play a by Bale the first though. game. Smart not to hesitate there. Ooh, Invis are in for the Puck. Very nice. Gonna They're going to try and get a kill top. All right, so Puck will go back. He'll lane until Beastmaster 6. Get a kill bottom. Batrider's dead yet again, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Puck used it. Damn. Oh, yeah. I feel like it would be nice if they could just get the regen on the Puck some other way and then wait till Beastmaster 6, then use the Invis rune top to actually try and help. But too important to stay in lane and keep denying the screen. You're such a min-maxer, Trent. I'm just going to uh, help out my Beastmaster, you That's know? That's what makes you such a good support. Right now, you're thinking, how can I help out this poor guy struggling? And real mid players are thinking, how can I maximize my farming experience in my How can I continue to keep shitting on this Queen of Pain? <laughs> how can I make Plop's <laughs> life more frustrating? I do not care at all about the rest of this game. Hey, Beastmaster, you're going to get a point in Hawk later? Okay, cool. You shouldn't get ganked anymore. I'm on Quop. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough stuff. But yeah, Cumin is still pretty markedly behind. A full level uh, trailing on the puck. They both got double null tally, both with uh, the, the Veils queued up like you were talking about. But I think Puck is very much going to beat him to the punch. I think it was his on yeah. the way. Yeah, there it is on the yeah. corner. So that will be the huge break point now where Puck can just pummel him. Ooh. Gyro backed away from top and TP'd out, actually. That is interesting. I well, feel like they're strong enough to hold top. But PL. now it's this PL with four heroes around him, and he is very dead. Dude, he's like about to get a solo kill, though. Look at this. Yeah, but he's he, still dead. He might be dead. Yeah, Gyro's here. He got glimpsed, but PL does not have a doppelganger. Puck, can you turn this around? Three-man coil. Call down. Connects on two. Puck jaunts away. 
We'll stay there for the sake. All Kuman's coming for revenge. Quap probably going to be able to clean up the disruptor. Pretty low on cooldowns. Kinetic field. Not going to buy him much time, and he'll get blown up. So PL dies. Ends up being a good trade in favor of the Dire. A lot of damage. Sand King's actually pretty low. Yeah, plus the Bat Rider wound up going top, so can hold that. Oh my god, those two are so low. Oh, Yash. Oh my god, if only he'd been out there. His invis, like the timing of his invis, so unfortunate. He seriously could have just shirked in that queen and she would have died in yeah. some. I saw that. That's brutal. Yeah. I think felt bad for him. Gave him a tip. And Yash says, you know, it doesn't give me any experience, right? And he gets the tome delivered from Humble, though, and that'll give him level six. And we have 13 seconds until coil. We have the roar ready. It's time to get some track kills. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. The way tomes are set up, if you're that bounty hunter, as long as you're level four by 10 minutes, you're kind of just thinking, I just need to make it to the tome. And now Quap again jumped on and obliterated. That dream coil is a free kill every time. She knows track if she tries gold. to blink, it's just not going to work. God, bounty hunter, so good, dude. Oh, I love this hero. I actually love playing this hero. Like, look at that. He just gets six. He just got 150 bonus gold. That is so much gold right now for a support player. Like, auras that just appear. Caught by a fiend's grip. PL. Pretty even game. Very bloody. 11 to 10. The 12 minute mark coming up soon. And only like a 1k, 1500 net worth lead or so for the detonators. Maybe just a bit more. How about our Beastmaster? Look at his net worth. He's got a blink dagger. Wait, what? He's ahead of the... Well, how did that Queen. happen? I mean, he's been jungling a lot, and he got a little bit of space up top because of the rotations, but still. Oh, all right, I'm back. I hit a little lag spike there, but yeah, Yaj died, but pretty good setup from the Beastmaster. Quap brings down Humble. Can the Radiant still clean this up? Punk jumps in, trying to do some damage. We're going to have to make the retreat. Holy shit, Awa that also gets brought down. That's Dude. turning completely disastrous. Dude, that nightmare was insane. He saved the, the Gyro's life. He nightmared and saved him from the orb damage. Ah, you're right. That was pretty clutch. Holy shit. Yeah, I uh, I don't know what happened. I, just, I had a big lag spike there, so I kind of missed the first setup of that team. Oh, mine skipped too. Mine oh, okay. server. All right. Yeah, I don't know what happened. So, no, that was uh, pretty clutch, though. I missed the team fight recap as well, but all of a sudden things have swung and the Dire have broken this one open. Huge team fight. How did this Beastmaster get so much farm, though? Like, what? What? I mean, they all left top. Like, remember when that Gyro rotated bottom? They never came back. And then it was only a Bat Rider who had cast the waves of the tower, but then Beastmaster was still wiping both uh, the wave, came in, killed both of those camps and where that fight's happening right now. And then he rotated back here and killed these camps, and then he cast the wave when it came back from the uh, Bat Rider push. I guess it's but true he, that it, he was like, just cycling. It doesn't take much, and that's what's great about the Wild Axes. Like, you farm yeah. so fast with that short cooldown. All right, pushing up top. Looks like the detonators want to do a little four plus one. They've got Puck in the mid lane. And everybody else up top. Mega positioned to mount a defense. But Bane just gets jumped on, tracked up, and going to be hard pressed to do much in the way of survival here. Forces out a primal roar at least. Static Storm used, Sand King. Being a little bit crafty, but they've got a track, so... Only so much he can do. Not going to be able to fog in the tree line. It'll be a twofer. And now that tier one tower is going to be under siege. Gyro cannot come up here. He just TPs the bottom shrine to just keep farming. So this one will be sacrificed. And they should be able to de get a decent foothold here inside the Radiant. Uh, or rather, yeah, Dire Jungle. Radiant already have one observer down up top to help kind of set up all of this up near there. And yeah, the lines come from Beastmaster. Hello? I want this. Like, <laughs> this should be ours now. We want to play all up in here. Want to control Roche. Want to get ourselves some track kills. Yeah. PL is uh, getting pretty close to the defusal. We were talking about how versatile this hero can be in terms of item selections. And I like that he's going for the old fashioned. Straight into the defusal after Treads Aquila. Bane and Disruptor yeah. having some fun in the jungle. Now PL and Bounty Hunter joining the party. 
But so we'll see. King gets a nice stun on two, and Yaj needs to be a little careful. Abing caught by a Fiend's Grip, Epicenter, Sonic Wave. That'll be an easy kill there. But Puck with the double damage finds the counter kill. It's one for one. I hear a lasso up top. Bat Rider sets it up onto Humble. Well, that makes it a two for one, this time favoring the Dire. <laughs> All the tips. Oh, there's the fight recap. Uh, Sabani was getting the tracks off, though, so uh, it was still a pretty big goal swing for the Dire side, however. Yep, the greedy bounty gets some bane, uh, gain, though. They can Roche pretty much whenever now, though, uh, with the Beastmaster Inner Beast plus the medallion that he has. They just need to bring the PL, use the illusions to tank. And, uh, yeah, as you said about the Diffusal Blade, too, like, I don't... I wouldn't hate SNY this game just because of how well it's done for some players with, like, how often we're fighting early on right now. Just that general tank ability, especially against a lot of AoE. Like, when you're playing against a gyrocopter and stuff. I've seen Ame do it several times, and it's worked out very well. But, once again, I think he needs Lincolns. So, I like just getting the Diffusal Blade and moving in towards that. Like, this is a really good Lincolns game. Yeah. I am definitely into that. Bottom lane, PL. Woo. Yeah, though, that... Um, that's kind of the discussion of the SMY, though. Situations like that. But he has Diffusal. Definitely a step. I mean, it, it's felt like so far, and as we mentioned in the draft, both teams relatively squishy. All about the catch. You know, if Bounty Hunter initiates, it looks like, wow, this Sand King really dies quick. If Bounty Hunter gets initiated on, it's like, wow, that Bounty Hunter died really quick. Oh, that Glimpse Dodge! He's going to yeah, die for it, though. Die, though. <laughs> And Queen of Pain actually could be in some trouble. It's a pretty good Static Storm Kinetic Field. They even put the Dream Coil onto Bane. Now Humble left alone as Yaj caught by the lasso, flame broken. He's gonna slowly tick down, ends up dying, but now Puck jumps in and gets two. The big cores have died and they glimpse back the Bane. The damage will be there, cannot TP out in time. Disruptor, I think, actually tied to a tower shot there at the end, but still a big fight with detonators. 1600 net worth swing of course much in their favor yeah once again the tracks went off so he still gained almost 400 gold despite dying there and he's gonna have a spirit vessel when he comes back oh my god this hero dude it's just like i don't know look what can you do uh get a yules get a lois um that's about it yeah Going for the yules on the queen. And I was thinking more with the the PL build. He needs to queue anything up, and I wonder if he might just go Manta. That would feel pretty strong this game too. Just like up against the uh, the fiend's grip and the lasso. That is a really nice thing to have. I mean, it's a pretty natural build up after the defusal. Just get those forced illusions. Uh, you don't have to worry about the orchid too much, at least not for a while. This build that Quap went for. So yeah, maybe a see. little bit less of an incentive to grab the Orchid. Or, uh, you can see how Bing's either. feeling, though. Every time he doppelgangers, he switches to Agi Treads for the damage for his illusions, but then for the rest of the time, he switches back to Strength. Like, he's really worried about being ganked and blown up in one shot. Yep. No, you're definitely right. Bounty Hunter looking for Courier Snipes potentially here in a very forward position, but has a lot of reinforcements on the way. Only hero not here right now is Queen of Pain. They're going to find the initiation onto 1414. That'll be an easy pick on Mr. Bane. Can they even grab more here? Glimpse onto the Sand King. It doesn't really move him all that much. Another double damage on Puck. I think they'll just settle for a tier one. SNY Gamers, it's up on the gyro. That'll be their choice, eh? All right. Billy Batrider is having a difficult time utilizing this blink first build. They, they did a nice job of getting the sinking and the Batrider farmed once again, which is pretty impressive. But uh, the sink issues, I think, have become a little bit apparent. And they never seem to be able to get this lasso online uh, mm -hmm. that well early on. This bounty hunter staying very aggressive. Also just trying to seize the day on this window where Quop feels kind of neutered. You know, like, uh, at least with the Yules, that'll give her the opportunity to reset if she gets initiated on. But right now, she gets jumped on. 
She has to be very conservative with how she uses that blink. Smoke, though, from Mega. Yeah, PL knows exactly where they all are, though. So, how do the Radiant respond? Dire scan and find them all. Both teams know exactly where each other are. Is the Radiant now scan? Yeah, red pretty much perfectly. Just gonna stay grouped up. Bounty. Getting some good vision control with these sentries. And now they're gonna head uh, right into the Roche pit. They've got a medallion. Uh, actually, a solar crest. On the Beastmaster now. And the Dire want no part of this. They are going to walk over and Batrider just immediately oh God, roared. Damage. Now Coil on two. The Bane, defensive nightmare, but not looking long for life. It's a 4v4 now that the Disruptor gets blown up. There's the Batrider lasso, ultimate from Quap. Now buyback starting to be used. Bane's going to get back into the fray. Radiant is starting to run low on resources, but you can say the same for the Dire. They get the kill on Abing. Yaj very low, but Puck still has so much HP, and I think he might start to clean this up. Beastmaster also still alive. Let's take a look at the recap here, and it's about an even gain for both sides, despite two buybacks used by wow. the Dire, both on Bane and Batrider. Dire was so close to going down. Just able to escape, largely because obviously the SNY tanky build, plus he was popping those drums and busting ass as fast as he could. Almost got tucking down by a shuriken bounce from the uh, bounty hunter, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, Gyro is very beefy. You go for a build like this, it just feels so good to be able to run into the front line, not really worry about getting blown up. BKB going to be next on the docket. Likely the same for Queen, and it is indeed. Looks what are like our He's thinking about a four staff, eh? Right. Mm -hmm. He's no pipe this game. On, uh, the PL. I wonder if he's going to go Manta or S and Y. I would think Manta. I think it's a very good Manta game when you're playing against Fiend's Grip and Lasso. And then there's always the possibility that the Queen brings out the uh, Orchid. and Yeah, she's actually thinking about the Lincolns instead. I mean, she's like far enough behind now that she, I think her thought process is, I just need to survive in these fights. Yeah, I just wonder if the BKB would be a better choice. But it's hard to tell. Sometimes that makes you too prime of a roar target. Yeah, it's a fair point. Now Smoke, being led by the Beastmaster, jumps in, gets the initiation onto Gyro. Nightmare buys him some time, but Static Storm Kinetic Field keep him locked down. Disruptor now getting low thanks to the Sand King, and they will trade favorably again, but not for long. Uh, it is all detonator all day. One for three. Bat Rider links back, but he's been tracked up and PL ready to dive. That makes it four. And Abing able to doppelganger. Now silence on the Quap. There's the Yules. Buyback from the Sand King. And Mega are holding on, but again, they have to use a buyback to do so. Uh, well, they didn't really have to. It's sort of a wasted buyback, but this time it's a huge swing. 3,400. Track old, track old. Everybody who dies is tracked. Yeah, he's done a very good job in these engagements. He's always bouncing his shurikens really well too, getting maximum damage off that max dose shuriken. Yeah. And uh, a Bing's cleaning up. He's getting like a thousand gold. It's not just the bounty hunter gets the gold, right? Like all of that bonus gold for allies. Plus he hit level 12 just as that fight started, and that doubles the amount of gold that each ally is getting, which is crazy. From 40 to 80. So that was an additional 240 gold with the last three kills that went to everyone who was nearby. Yeah. Like, hello. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely right. It's a game changer. And that's not the first time it's happened. You look at that kill score and you're like, yeah, 26 to 23. It's been pretty even. Hey. And then you realize that when all of those are track kills or 80% of them are track kills, you know, that gold starts to stack up. And just look at Bounty Hunter relative to the other supports. He's an item ahead. You know, he's got the yeah. full spirit vessel and the hood of defiance now. So he's not that little squish bag that needs to be super cautious in the front line. He actually has some uh, decent survivability. Yeah, I'm really glad he did not go for the 4-staff. I 100% agree that Pipe was actually the correct item. Uh, and he had the 4-staff queued up, so I'm, I'm glad he switched it. Just bought himself a hood. Batrider trying to get this 4-staff. 
That's still a little ways off the recipe. He also has no Yules yet either. Not really an off laner as well. Like he basically hands that off to Sand King in these games as they will catch the puck with the Fiend's Grip down bottom. It's such a difficult thing to do, but when it's led by a uh, Sand King, it can happen. Puck will have a, a Lincoln soon, so that can't be a possibility, but they get the counter kill top. Yeah, they see the commitment and they just go straight in. Puck would be uh, okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right with the Lincolns, though. Will not. Uh, make things easy for the Dyer in terms of controlling this puck. It's been a difficulty throughout this entire game as now Sand King heads top. Abang will still be able to finish off this tower. Meanwhile, mid lane, Bane glimpsed back after a nightmare. Static Storm, Kinetic Field, follow-up damage from Yaj, and they'll get another pick. Now, back up top. PL getting low, but Primal Roar onto the Gyrocopter. That's a Sonic Wave. Now remember, Aegis of the Immortal PL coming back up, stun into call down. Good setup from the Dire, but not quite enough. Doppelganger, and now the Rocket will chase him down, and that's a dominating streak ended. A lot of chaos around the map, but this time I think Mega pretty happy with themselves. Bring down that PL and get the Aegis. Yeah, they just got a little bit too spread, I would say, from the side detonator. They have all these boots of travel, like on the uh, Beastmaster and the Puck, and I think that's supposed to be an idea where they sync it up with the uh, Bounty Hunter to just create kill threats in every lane. And uh, they were able to get the kill in the mid lane. They obviously lost the Puck to start with the bottom lane, but just because they had been so split, the PL was a pretty easy target. So well done there by our Sand King. He's been playing really well in both games. Carried them pretty hard in game number one. And uh, we'll see if he can do it again here. I would say so. Yeah, I think some of it is also off the back of the puck, though. You know, that fight was with the, the puck dead to get things started. And just illustrating how important the fairy dragon is. Big burst, the silence, the lockdown. Ooh, he actually found queen in the tree line here. And she'll not... Okay, she has the TP, but stunned, and she's going to die. Still a little ways off the Lincolns. Great stalking there. Very good. And now that tier two tower down bottom, that's going to be the target. They want it. And kill it, they shall. Twenty five hundred gold for the best, right? I don't see why you wouldn't just go back for Necros. It feels like a good Necro game. The downside is you can argue for the Gyrocopter, but I don't know. They're still pretty amazing for pushing. Yeah, I mean, if you pay attention with where they, I mean, where the gyro is and how you use them, you don't have to suicide them into the gyro. You know, you can yeah. just use them to siege and be a little more tactful. I agree. I think the necro book's uh, a fine choice. Abing, almost in trouble, but doppelgangers down to the low ground. Dream coil on the bat rider, and a glimpse back. Those right clicks will be enough. And Aloha takes a tumble now on the far side. The sad boy. Makes it back to the high ground. Fiend's Grip stun on the Yaj. They've got the Quap here for extra damage. And that'll be a kill on the Bounty Hunter. Maybe they can grab a little bit more. Bane. Oh, nice Blinken. Jumped blink on. A nice initiation now onto the Quap, who still doesn't have that Lincolns. And now it's Sand King left alone to defend. Four down for Mega. Triple kill for Ah Bing. This is looking to be close to the end, Trent. Another 2,000 swing, limited buyback potential. Quap, the only one with it available. Yeah, they just kind of had this whole game under control. I'm still impressed with how well this Beastmaster recovered. His flash farm. You know, maybe this hero plays a little bit better from behind than I was giving him credit for. You know, his flash farming. I mean, was he got impressive. left completely alone. Like, yeah, but he, not for that long. He, what was it? Four dude, minutes? It was like three minutes, dude. The gyro would TP down really early, and he just kind of stayed down there because they kept like creating fights and engagements down there. And then the bat rider went top, but bat rider wasn't threatening. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like actually, Owa should go for a. Uh, a Lotus would be a really cool choice right now for the Beastmaster. I think that would just like completely close out this game. And like if he just put that on the, the PL, he can't get lassoed really, or else the Bat Rider's gonna get stuck. He can't get Fiend's Grip or gets instantly cancelled. Burrow Strike just sends you back the other way. Do you, you like that more than uh, the Necro Book? I think so. Um, well, it just grows so expensive. I don't think I want to like lose my buyback right now, and then there's still the threat of it just dies to Gyro. 
I'd be okay with the Neko, but I, I kind of like just how aggressive he's been playing and jumping into the base, and I wouldn't mind a BKB or a Lotus. I mean, in some ways, too, though, you don't can't forget, like, that Gyro being able to kill it easily is a bit of a double-edged sword. Like, yeah, he gets the farm, but that last word does a, or last will or whatever it is, last yeah. will does a lot of damage. He has a uh, BKB, but... though, and you assume that while he's black canning, he's going to have his BKB going. That's probably true. Queen of Pain, able to survive, but not for long enough. Man, Puck is just a step ahead of this co-op at every turn. Eon Disc next. Yeah, this is a snowball on Puck. Got off to a very good start, and Trackle really helps the Puck, too. Can they actually kill Opping here? Doppelganger, this is going to be tough. BKB's used. Black Cannon's on. Awa starting to run. There's reinforcements coming. That oh, shuriken man, that bouncing shuriken. around. All of the Radiant are here. Now the glimpse, and this could be so bad for Mega. There's two down. Abe getting they low, caught. but Sad Boy can't quite catch him, and they're just going to call GG right there as they start to get cleaned up in this fight. Sand King going to be the last to get brought down, and that's it. First series in the books. It will go 1-1. Detonators find their first win. Man, I loved a lot of the choices they made that game. Uh, the way that they just like bought the boots of travel so early on the puck with the veil, he was able to farm so quickly across the map and just utilize the full vision that Bounty Hunter was providing, always pushing out the waves where the enemies weren't at. That's what scaled the puck into such a ridiculous degree, while everyone else was shadowing the PL a lot more and creating fights around him. And 